Hey guys, Fireblade here, and welcome to another What If the Climate Tree with Dragon Ball Z. In the last part, we went through the prologue of Amphibia as well as Dragon Ball Z. Now I say prologue of Z because it took place after Dragon Ball, but before Z. That's enough messing around. Let's get right on into it. Before we continue on with the actual story, I need to clear up a little something. In the first part, I made it seem that Leaf stayed on Earth because I thought that's what happened. But apparently when I recorded part one, apparently it was said that Leaf didn't stay on Earth. She just left the box there. They returned to Amphibia and made Wartwood. <laughs> I thought we had enough information, but apparently I got told no F you. <laughs> so this is a simple fix. We're gonna change the order of things that happened. Leaf made Wartwood and made a family there. First, she was discovered by, I forgot what was name. let's say the other member of Andreas's polynamorous relationship. She was found by him. Since the Toad wanted to try to help Andreas more, he was going to take Leaf to Andreas. Leaf was telling him that, that this was definitely for their own good, that Andreas cannot have it back. The Toad, he says that Andreas was really hurt, Leaf. Just talk to him or don't make me do something that I don't want none of us to do. Leaf says that she would just give him like a day to uh, get ready to which a day does pass only to find out that leaf is gone anyways now let's get right back to where we left off in mount poutsu gohan studying by a lake he's so engrossed into his reading that he didn't notice somebody calling out to him when gohan finally hears a voice calling to him he turns and looks out into the lake curious he goes up to the lake and walks on the little pier thing on the lake as Gohan reaches the edge, a fish pops out of the lake. Darling Gohan, Rawr! I am the king of this lake. You have eaten my brethren. Now you shall pay. Gohan backs up, scared that this fish is actually going to eat him. The fish rises up again to reveal Anne under him. Just kidding, it's me Gohan. Gohan sighs a breath of relief. Anne, that was mean. You scared me. Oh, I'm sorry Gohan, I just wanted to make a laugh. Come on, let's eat! To which Anne serves up the fish, which Gohan mostly eaten, but Anne was still able to eat her fill. Now mind you, this isn't the fish that is as big as Goku would have gotten, but it's still pretty big. Just as they finish eating, Goku and Chi Chi walks up to them. There you guys are. You guys ready? Yeah, we're ready Goku. We just ate. Oh, and we left you some. Awesome! Chi Chi, we also left you some too. Thank you, Anne, but that wasn't necessary. I insist. Come on, have some. To which they do eat some of the leftover fish. After they eat, Goku calls the flying Nimbus. Goku lets Gohan and Chi Chi on the Nimbus and tells the Nimbus to follow him. Him and Anne flies up into the air and flies out to Kame House. Hey, Chi Chi, are Goku's friends as cool as they seem to be? Mm, I wouldn't say that, but they're definitely good people. As they arrive at Kame House, Bulma and Krillin comes out of the house to greet Goku and Chi Chi. They're surprised that not only does Goku have a kid with him, you see a girl with an almost boyish haircut and with a big scar on her right arm. They first ask Goku who the kid is, to which he tells them that, you know, it is his son. They are, like in the original, they are surprised that Goku had a kid. They ask if Gohan's ever seen the full moon, to which Goku says that no, they haven't because they go to sleep pretty early. Bulma looks at Anne, to which Anne just gives her the uh, shush motion and a motion that says, do not say anything. Krillin asks who the girl is, to which Anne introduces herself. She says that Goku had helped her out and they've given her a place to stay. She repaid her by farming for them to not only help them out and whatnot, but also to make some money for them. In the three years that she spent with them, she has trained with Goku. Goku using the same method that he and Krillin learned from Master Roshi. To which Roshi says that it seems he have taken the Turtle Hermit training without the esteemed Master Roshi himself. And that he needs to properly inspect her. So his Chi Chi smacks Master Roshi in the head saying, She's underage old man, you better not try anything. To which Anne backs up and says, Oh man, Goku don't tell me your master's a pervert. And that's an old anime trope. Before Goku can say anything, he senses a powerful energy. After waiting for a few moments, they see Raditz. 
The events of the show plays out the same with the exception that Anne and Chi Chi is there. After Radis takes Gohan, Chi Chi is terrified that Gohan was taken and that Radis was basically able to one shot Goku. Goku says that he's not going to stop at anything and that he will get their son. Anne offers to go and help him, to which he agrees to. Before they leave, Piccolo makes himself known and says that with a power like that, you two might not be enough. You're going to need my help. At first, they are reluctant to, especially Chi Chi, but it's Anne who makes the call saying that we're going to need as much help as we can get. You said that Piccolo was very powerful. If Raditz can, like, destroy planets like he says he can, then we're going to need his help. To which Goku agrees with and lets Piccolo follow him. And so they fly off after Raditz. Now, we're going to take a little break from the story to talk about power levels. Now, letting you know, I thought I was prepared to talk about power levels, but <laughs> I didn't. This is honestly a separate recording. I'm just going to go over it briefly. When it comes to the original show, I think I'm overestimating them. So I gave Anne a power level of 15. After spending time in Wartwood, I gave her a power level of 17. As for Sasha, I gave her a power level of 16. Compared to what a lot of people think, I don't think Sasha would be much stronger than anyone else. Or well, maybe much stronger than Marcy, but not as much as Anne. I believe them to be more at an equal playing field there. However, obviously after training with Grimes, I believe she would have had a power level of 21. As for the, the Calamity power or the Gems power, again these are all guesses. Anne is the only one who had more use of a power, so when Anne first got the power, I gave her a time 15 multiplier, so with her time in Wartwood, her power level will be at 255 with the partial power of the gem. The full power gem, I gave it a 50 multiplier, which honestly, I, I got after trying to calculate <laughs> all three gems. So yeah, I decided to get the full power gem a 50 times multiplier, which would bring Anne's power level to 850. As for all three, I'm not 100% sure. All I do know is that I needed to have a power level greater than Roshi when he first destroyed the moon in Dragon Ball. According to the wiki, which I believe they got their numbers from the Daizenshu, they clocked Roshi at 3.30, and so I needed a power level greater than that. I decided to use the Domination Multiplier, considering and just obliterated the moon, I decided to use the Domination Multiplier, which you should see on screen right now. I decided to use the very last one, times 2.25 Multiplier, which brought the power level that needed to be at least 743. It was then I realized that this wasn't the ordinary moon. The core modified it with most likely materials and whatnot from other worlds and whatnot. And so it was after that I decided to give all three gems a multiplier of 300, which would bring Anne's power level up to 5100. Again, these are all guesses. As for all three gems, I'm still not 100% satisfied with that one. I want to give it an unlimited multiplier, like the change state Goku had in GT. If you don't know about that, I definitely recommend checking out a Saiyan Scholar video on the Goku's change form from GT. It'll be down in the description below. I'm not 100% satisfied with that 300 multiplier with the gems. Anyways, as for Sasha's original power level, like I said, I gave her originally a power level of 16. After training with Grimes, a power level of 21. After using the full power gem, she would have had, which is a 50 times multiplier, she would have had a 1050 power level. Now, why did I try to calculate their power levels from the original? Because it gives me an uh, indication on what I should do for this what if. Anyways, that time to go into the power levels for this what if. With Anne, her power level again at the start would have been 15, just like how I gave it in the original. After taking Roshi's training from Goku, I believe her power level would have been at 47, and that is given the same amount of time that Goku and Krillin had, which I believe all they had was just a couple of months. After that, she would have trained with Goku for about 30 years, so I gave her a power level of 301, which is under Goku's power level, because in the original, Goku's power level was 334. After training with Anne for 3 years, Goku's power level would have been 371, so yeah, Goku would have gotten stronger, just like Goku and Anne. Sasha also has been training as well. Like I said in the original, Sasha had a power level of 16. She would have mostly trained with Vegeta, but not only Vegeta, but she would have also trained with Raditz and Nappa. Raditz's power level 
is 1400. Sasha trained more with Vegeta than she would have with the others. In the original, Raditz's power level was 1200. It could have been more, but that's the number that the wiki got, which again, I believe they got from the Daizenshi. Yeah. That's all I'm gonna go with for like Sasha and the others. I'll get more into their power levels once we start going to the battle against the Saiyans. Anyway, now that I got done with power levels, let's continue on with the story. Once Goku, Piccolo, and Anne lands on the field where Raditz is, a battle commenced similar to how it does in canon, with the exception that Anne is there, Goku's a bit stronger, and so is Raditz. Unfortunately for them, despite changes with another person helping them, the conclusion results in the same, with Goku having to sacrifice himself to Piccolo using the uh, Mankanko Sampanko. Just like in the original, everyone else comes to the battlefield just to see, you know, Goku dying and Kami taking Goku to the other world. As Piccolo takes Gohan away, Chi Chi starts falling her eyes out and turns to Anne to try to help her. Anne tries to tell Chi Chi that this might be the only thing to do because Raditz had allies and they're much stronger than he is and they're gonna come in in about a year. Having Go Gohan did the most amount of damage to Raditz than any of them did, if they can train Gohan then it'll be really really helpful. Chi Chi argues with her saying that Gohan is just four years old. He cannot fight. He needs to study and whatnot. And counters again saying that what good is studying if the earth is blown up? I'm sorry, Chi Chi, but this needs to be done. Not wanting to argue anymore, Anne flies off and follows Piccolo. After a little while, Anne finds Piccolo who is meditating. Anne arrives in front of Piccolo, and Piccolo, who knew that he would have been followed, just says, If you try to take him back, then I will stop you, no matter if we have to fight the Saiyans. I'm not here to fight you, Piccolo. In fact, I want to ask you to train me. This catches Piccolo by surprise. You want me to train you? You trained with Goku, so why would you want me to train you? It's as you said, Piccolo. We only have a year to train. You are almost as powerful as Goku, and I'm almost as strong as you. If you and me train together, then we can get a lot stronger. And since you're going to train Gohan as well, he can get a lot stronger too. Think about it, it makes so much sense. Piccolo thinks about it for a little while, and then he ultimately agrees to it. And so, Piccolo and Anne starts training together, and once Gohan starts to learn more, they start incorporating him into their training. After a year passes, the Saiyans have arrived. Just like in the original, Nappa destroys the city that they landed in. Sasha chews out Nappa saying that her friends could have been there, which Nappa just says that he doesn't care about her friends. Vegeta all agrees that Sasha's friends isn't much more important. He does agree with Sasha when she called Nappa an idiot, saying that the Dragon Ball could have been in that city and Nappa just blew it all to heck. After apologizing, Sasha, who was using her scouter, finds three power levels. Sasha tells Nappa and Vegeta about the power that her scouter picked up and so they fly over there. Once the three land over there, Anne is surprised to see that Sasha is with them and Sasha is surprised to see that Anne was one of the power levels that her scouter picked up. Sasha, is that really you? What are you doing with them? Sasha doesn't know what to say until she hears Vegeta tells Nappa to plant the Cybermen. Sasha tells them to wait, saying that maybe we don't need to kill them, that maybe we can recruit them, or at least Anne, to which everyone gives Sasha a surprise to look. Yeah, we are not doing that, Sasha. We are here to kill them and get the Dragon Balls. Vegeta, you owe me this. I sat through the Ginyu's stupid rant for you, alright? So you owe me this. <laughs> I told you, Vegeta, that she would use this against you. Ugh, fine. Make your demands. Listen, there's a way for us to all get what we want, alright? No one has to die here, and we can leave if you just give us the Dragon Balls and Anne comes with us. Everyone is surprised by this, thinking that... No, they're giving us a way out. We don't have to fight. But unfortunately for them, Anne says that the Dragon Balls were already used and they're worthless now. You would have to wait a year to uh, use them, which is enough for Vegeta to say, Well then, it's like we don't have a deal. Sasha, you already used your favor up. And because you waste our time, you have to be the one to kill them. W what Me? After hearing this, everyone else gets into a battle stance, waiting for Sasha to strike. Yes, you. Now do it before I kill you myself. <sighs> Fine. Sasha, you can't be serious. 
Are you really going to side with them? Yes, I am, man. I don't want to fight you, so stand down. But... Sasha, stand down. And end of discussion. To which Anne does, and she even backs away from the group. Anne, you can't be serious. I... I... Tch, looks like we have to fight then. And so, the battle commenced, with all of them actually targeting Sasha. Now, we're going to go back at the power levels here. I mentioned that Sasha's trained with Raditz, Nappa, and Vegeta, mainly Vegeta. And because of that, Sasha's power level after training with Vegeta would have been 7300, which is just under Nappa's cannon power level. As for their power levels, Nappa's power level would have been 7600, and Vegeta's power level would have been 19,000. But yes, they are stronger. In fact, because of this, Vegeta also less insulted at the idea of training because he actually seen how training can actually bring someone up now as for everyone else their power level stays the same with the exception for piccolo and gohan as power level after training for the saiyans is 3400 piccolo's power level after training with the saiyans is 4000 gohan's power level after training for the saiyans is 1138 going back to the story after the fight goes on for a little bit, Vegeta tells Sasha to finish them off now. Quit Sasha, powers a key blast in her hands and lets them loose, ready to pierce through each of the fighters. Before the blast even gets near them, each key blast gets intercepted by another one. Sasha turns to see who fired those energy blasts and finds that it was Anne who fired the energy blast. What are you doing, Anne? I told you to stand down! Anne flies up to Sasha saying that these are her mentor's friend and she's not going to let them die. You seriously are going to fight for them, man? They don't matter. Yes, they do, Sasha, and I will fight you. Fine. That's how you want it. And so they begin to fight as well. Piccolo seeing that with Anne now fighting, they can possibly have a chance. Vegeta tells Nappa to intercept them and to let Sasha deal with the person that she's been looking for, to which Nappa gladly does. He intercepts them, and their fight actually continues on as canon, with the exception that Yamcha's alive. Their battle continues on the same until Chaozu is about to kamikaze. As Nappa tries to shake Chaozu off of him, he spots Anne and Sasha having this little energy barrage battle. Flies towards Anne with Chaozu aiming at her. Krillin calls to Anne to look out for Nappa. When she sees Nappa flying towards her with Chaozu about ready to explode, she gathers energy up to her mouth and fires it launching her to the ground. Anne makes a comment saying that she doesn't like doing that or that she doesn't want to do that again. Just as Nappa arrives where Anne was once was, Shaozu explodes. Sasha actually believes that she was the one that did that to Nappa. After the dust settles, we see that Nappa is still in fact still alive. And so the event plays out again similar to how they do in the anime. Vegeta tells Sasha that it's enough playing around out of her. It's time to kill her. Sasha, obviously been holding back since against Anne, doesn't say anything, just gives Anne a somber look and charges right at her. Anne, who wasn't ready to try to counter, blocks the attack, but Sasha immediately breaks and delivers a powerful kick to Anne's stomach. Before the kick sends Anne flying, Sasha says, I'm sorry, and fires key out from her foot, which sends Anne flying into a cliff. With Chaozu and Tien dead, Yamcha charges at Sasha, try to get revenge for Anne. Sasha effortlessly dodge and pierces Yamcha with a key blade. She sends key through the blade which causes more blades to protrude out of Yamcha and then explode, similar to the Needlers from Halo. With Yamcha now dead, only Piccolo, Krillin, and Gohan is left. Gohan, after seeing his sister killed, goes into a rage and charges after Sasha. He catches one off guard. Gohan kicks Sasha over to Nappa and fires a Masenko at them both, obviously trying to uh, avenge Anne and everyone else. Like in the original, it does nothing. Nappa fires an energy blast at Gohan, trying to kill him. Just like in the original, Piccolo sacrifices himself and in his dying breath, tells him that both him and Anne were the only one to really treat him like a person, that he's glad to call them his friend. Nappa stomps over to Gohan and is about ready to crush him, that is until in a cliff that was destroyed, a blue light is seen, and just as Nappa is about to crush Gohan, Gohan disappears. Everyone looks around until they see Anne holding Gohan 
with blue spiked up hair and a lotus-like aura. Anne, is that you? Hey, Gohan. You alright? Anne, you're alive! What is this? Anne? Sasha. Before anything else can happen, Goku lands on the battlefield. Everyone turns to see with Goku. Gohan, Krillin, and Anne are excited to see that Goku is here. Goku, seeing that three people are left, breaks the last sense to be into three pieces, giving one to Krillin, Gohan, and Anne. After getting a rundown of what has happened, Goku suggests that they move the battlefield somewhere else, but Nappa doesn't agree with that. Nappa charges at Goku, but Goku obviously stops him. Just like in the original, Nappa tries to go after Gohan and Krillin, with the exception that Anne is there and ready to defend against him, even though Anne has been glaring daggers at Sasha, waiting for her to strike. Sasha, she's just been too shocked at seeing this power that Anne has. To which again, things happen like they do in canon, with Goku using the Kaioken, breaking Nappa's back, and Vegeta killing Nappa for being useless. Vegeta says that if Sasha doesn't get her shit together, that he'll do the same thing to her. Which gets Sasha to get her shit together. Vegeta indulges Goku into moving the battlefield somewhere else, with Sasha and Anne following them. Before I do my outro, let's get into the power level for Goku. In the original, Goku's power level after training with King Kai was 8,200. Goku's power level after training with King Kai in this what if is over 9,000. 9,100 to be exact. With the Kaioken, it's spiked up to 13,650. And as for Anne, using the Calamity power, remind you, she has the full power gem. Her power level, if it was full mind you, would be at 160,000. And yeah, that is the end of this video. If you liked the video, be sure to click that like and the subscribe button. I would love to more for you guys. Anyway, Fireblade here, and I will see you later, whatever I make. Bye.